Hi everyone. In this video you will learn how to solve first degree trig equations and you will learn how to provide solutions on a specified domain as well as provide the general solution. Let's get started. So we'll take a look at two examples and for the equation in each example we need to A solve on the specified domain and B state the general solution. We will report answers as exact values uh, if possible and otherwise we'll round to the nearest degree. So in our first case, we've got 3 cos theta plus 1 equals 3 minus cos theta. And we need to provide the solutions or the roots of this equation on the domain 0 to 2 pi. The first thing to note is that this is a first degree trig equation in that when you look at the trig terms, cos theta on the left and cos theta on the right, um, they're not squared or cubed or anything like that. If they were squared, they'd be called second degree trig equations. Okay, So this is a first degree trig equation. All we have to do here is isolate the trig um, function, okay, or isolate the trig term. So uh, I'm going to collect some like terms. I've got, uh, you know, cos thetas on each side. So if I add cos theta to both sides, I end up with 4 cos theta uh, plus 1 is equal to 3. And then, of course, subtract 1, I'll have 4 cos theta is equal to 2. And divide both sides by 4. I end up with cos theta is equal to half. Now, cos theta is equal to half um, at a very particular point on the unit circle. So I'll just bring out a unit circle here. And um, let's see if we can maybe put this off to the side here. So cos theta, remember, on the unit circle is the x-coordinate. And so what we end up with is x-coordinate is equal to half right about here and right about there. Okay, so looking at my domain, uh, it appears that I need to be in um, radian mode. And so when I think about these two angles in, uh, in terms of radians, I come up with uh, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Okay, so the answer to part A would be that the angle theta is equal to pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. Okay, those are the two values of theta that would satisfy this equation. Now part B asks for the general solution. And so when we think about the general solution, essentially what we're thinking of is we're saying, look, we're not going to be worried about this domain anymore. We just need to report uh, the values of theta, any value of theta, or all the values of theta that would satisfy this equation. Okay, and we're not going to be confined to 0 to 2 pi. So what we can do is we can say, well, it's going to be pi over 3. It's going to be 5 pi over 3. Those are the first two. Plus every time you rotate around the unit circle, right, you will come up against the coterminal angle that will also, when substituted into this equation, satisfy the equation. So how we write this is we will say, uh, I guess I'll leave myself a little bit of room here. So theta g, g is for general solution. Uh, so theta is equal to pi over 3 plus, okay, to, to write all of the coterminal angles to pi over 3, I would have to write uh, plus multiples of, I'm just going to clean this up a bit, plus multiples of 2 pi. Likewise, all of the coterminal angles to 5 pi over 3 would be 5 pi over 3 plus 2 n pi. And of course, n is an element of the integers because we could add multiples of 2 pi, we could also subtract multiples of 2 pi and rotate in the clockwise direction to get uh, additional roots. Okay, so let's move on to the next example. And in the next example, we've got 2 cotangent theta plus 3 is equal to cotangent theta minus 9. Um, first, we're going to solve this on the specified domain from negative 180 degrees to 360 degrees. And then we're going to um, come up with the general solution. So again, this is a first degree trig equation. And what we want to do as sort of our first order of business is to isolate the trig equation. And in this case, or sorry, I isolate the trig function. So in this case, we're going to do something similar. So I'm going to subtract cotangent theta from both sides. And I'm also going to subtract 3 from both sides. And so I'll end up with 2 cotangent theta minus cotangent theta is just 1 cotangent theta. The 3's cancel. These cotangent thetas cancel, and I'm left with negative 12 on the other side. Okay, so um, 
negative 12 is not going to be a familiar ratio to me on the unit circle. Is it on the unit circle? It is, but it's not one of the ones that I've memorized. So what I'm going to do is I'll reciprocate both sides okay, of uh, this equation, and I end up with tan theta is equal to negative 1 12th. Again, that's not familiar to me. So what I'm going to do is I will, first of all, determine by looking at the coordinate plane and making use of cast rule, I will determine where 10 is negative. So I'm anticipating that um, 10 is going to be negative in quadrants 2 and in quad and 4 actually. So I know that for 10 the, the roots are diametrically opposed and I am anticipating a small reference angle because opposite over adjacent is approximately 1 over 12. Okay, so let's go to the calculator and see what the reference angle would be. Okay, so in this case, I will have uh, theta, let's call it theta r for reference angle, is equal to inverse 10 of, you might remember this from a, a previous video, you take the inverse 10 of the absolute value of the ratio. Okay. Uh, the mode that we should be in is degree mode, as indicated in the domain. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in degree mode. Yes, I am. Inverse 10 now of 1 12th. And I get a reference angle of, we'll just say 5 degrees. Okay, 5 degrees approximately when all is said and done. So that's 5 degrees, that's 5 degrees. Okay, um, and so my actual angles are going to be theta is equal to 180 degrees minus 5 degrees. Okay, and I'll also have 360 degrees minus 5 degrees. Now I'm going to take a look at my domain here, which is a little bit unusual. Usually it goes from 0 to 360, and if it did start at 0, then these would be my two answers. But it allows me an additional half turn in the, in the negative uh, direction. So if I go this way, then I end up with um, a negative 5 degree rotation angle. And if I continue, well actually I'm limited at this point, negative 180. If I could go to negative 185, if this allowed me to go to negative 185, then i pick up another route. So there's only one other root that is included, which is negative 5 degrees. So my final answer, on this domain at least, would be 175 degrees, uh, 355 degrees, and negative 5 degrees. Okay, And we know full well that 355 degrees and negative 5 degrees are coterminal, but since they both fall within this domain, we include them both. Okay, and I probably should have said that this is really our solution for part A. Um, so there's, there's part A. Part B is asking for the general solution. Now, with the general solution, we can recognize that um, because this is a, well, it turns out to be equivalent to a tan equation, that the roots are actually 180 degrees apart. Okay, so again, the general solution is saying, hey, let's not worry about the domain and just give me every single theta that actually satisfies this equation, right? So these two, these two angles here will satisfy the equation and those were 175 and 355. And so what we can say is, okay, so one of them is 175 and normally what we would do is we'd say, okay, let's add a full rotation to get to the next coterminal angle. But really what we could do is we could add just half of a rotation. Because if I add half a rotation, then I'll end up at the other root. And then if I add another half rotation, I'll end up at uh, another root, which is coterminal to the first one. And I can just keep adding 180 to get additional roots. So continuing to add 180 degrees is, is uh, equivalent to just adding multiples of uh, 180 degrees. I probably should have written it like this, okay, where n is an element of the integers, okay. And in this way, you'll notice when you compare the answer for part B for this example and for the previous example, uh, the previous example required a few statements, right? We couldn't just go here, just add the same thing every time and you'll just keep getting the same, uh, you'll just keep getting ro the roots that satisfy the equation. 
And that's because this angle right here is smaller than this angle right here, or at least they're not the same. Okay, whereas if you look at this equation, or this situation, this angle here, and I probably should use a different color, this angle here, 180, is exactly this angle here, 180. So we can continue to add multiples of 180, or I guess subtract multiples of 180 to get the general solution.